the Lord, boys and girls, and welcome back to Sunday School. It is so good to see you all. I'm Sister Casey Fisher, your primary class, ages five to eight teacher. We are going to learn so much again together this quarter, but before we jump in, you all know how we like to start off our quarter, how we like to start off our lessons by giving thanks. And tis the season for giving. Tis the season for giving. We will learn about the ultimate gift this quarter, which is Jesus Christ. God gave his son. But before we get into any of the lessons again, let's get started with telling God thank you, with giving thanks. What are you thankful for? What do you want to let God know you appreciate? What is it? Anything at all. You can get it in your heart, get it in your mind, and just reflect on it. Think of how good God is. And we're going to tell him thank you. On the count of three, is everybody ready? Oh, I see some of you are not ready yet. I will wait till everyone's ready. Just give me a quick thumbs up when you're ready. Perfect, awesome. Now, when I get to three, I want you all to shout as loud as you can. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to feel it all through your body. I want your parents to hear it, your friends to hear it, your neighbors to hear it. I want everyone to hear us telling God, thank you. Thumbs up when you're ready. Awesome. One, two, three. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, you guys know that is my favorite thing to do. Tell God thank you. Just like you like to be thanked when you do something for someone else, God likes to be thanked as well. So tell God thank you each and every day. It is always the right time to tell God thank you. So now that we have told God thanks, we are going to let God know what we need from him today. What do you need from God? Or someone that you love, someone that you care about, what do they need from God? Someone that you've seen out and about, it may be a stranger, someone you don't know, but you don't have to know someone to recognize that they need something. And you might not always be in the position to fill that need for them, but God can. He is king. He is Lord over everything. So God can answer any and all prayers. So what do you need from God today? Is it patience? Is it to be more loving? Is it help in school? Are you looking to be a leader? God can help with all those things. So we're going to put those thoughts in our mind too, or hold them in our heart. And we are going to go and ask of God. We're going to take the thanks, the things that we are thankful for, and we're going to combine them with the things that we need and they're asking for. And when we put those two things together, that makes prayer. That's right. It is that easy. All prayer is, is thanking God and asking God for the things that we need. We put those two things together and we've got prayer. So. Let's get ready to pray. Everyone close your eyes and bow your head. Lord, we have come and we have told you thank you for Lord being with us, protecting us, Lord Jesus, providing for us. We thank you, Lord, for loving us. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see another day. We have told you thank you, Lord Jesus, for all those things that we were holding in our mind and in our heart, Lord. And now there's things that we need from you, Lord Jesus. We're asking you, Lord, to heal, to protect, to deliver, to save, Lord Jesus. We're asking, Lord Jesus, for you to comfort someone. There are so many needs, Lord Jesus, not just our needs, but needs of those around us. And we are coming to you, Lord, and we are bringing all those asks, even the ones that weren't said out loud, Lord Jesus, in our minds and in our heart. We trust and we have faith in you, Lord Jesus, to answer our prayers. 
Lastly, Lord, we ask you to be with us today in Sunday school. Open our minds, Lord Jesus, and our ears so that we can hear and learn about you, Lord Jesus. Help us to retain the information, not just for ourselves, Lord, but so we can share it with someone else. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, boys and girls, it is time to dive into this quarter's lesson. Lesson 11. Jesus answers Pilate's questions. This lesson can be found in John chapter 18, verses 28 through 40. Our golden text is found in John chapter 18, verse 36. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight? Jesus had been arrested and put on trial. Put on trial. Next, the Jewish religious leaders brought Jesus to the Roman governor, Pilate. Pilate. They lied about Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? Pilate asked. Is this your own idea? Asked Jesus. Or did others tell you this about me? Your own people handed you over to me, Pilate responded. What is it you have done? Jesus answered by saying, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would have fought to keep me from being arrested. Pilate came out and announced that Jesus was not guilty of any crime any crime. He also offered to release Jesus, but the people cried out for a man named Barabbas to be released instead. Jesus was arrested. Our Savior, the Son of God, the King of Kings, he was arrested. And his crime, according to the people, was that he declared that he was the Messiah, the one true God, the Savior that had come to forgive them of their sins and give them everlasting lives. God was only guilty of trying to help us, trying to save us. And Pilate asked Jesus what he had done. He asked him about the accusations. And Jesus told him, my kingdom is not of this world. And what that means is that God's kingdom isn't on earth. We know that God's kingdom is in heaven. So he told Pilate, if my kingdom was of this world, would I be here? My people would have fought for me so that I would not have been arrested. Pilate didn't find anything wrong that Jesus had done. And he told the people that. He told the people that, he was going to release Jesus. He gave them an option. He said, do you want Jesus or do you want Barabbas? Barabbas was guilty. He was guilty of treason. He was working against the leadership and the people. Jesus was trying to save the leadership and the people. But when Pilate gave the people a choice, when he asked them, should I free Barabbas or should I free Jesus? They called out, they screamed out, Barabbas, we want Barabbas. They chose Barabbas instead of the man that was offering them salvation, offering them eternal life. Oh my gosh. But it's all according to God's plan. God had a plan. Jesus was on this earth for a reason. He had to be arrested. He had to be convicted. And he had to be sacrificed on the cross for our sins. He had to die for us. It was according to God's plan so that we can have what we are offered now. Salvation, forgiveness through Jesus Christ evidence of his power and anointing through speaking in tongues. And when he comes back for us, we will have eternal life with him in heaven. 
So yes, Jesus was arrested, but it was all a part of the plan. Boys and girls, I hope that you enjoyed today's lesson and that you learned something that you can apply to your life and share with someone else. That's right. We are to be sharing the gospel of God. That's right. The gospel of Jesus Christ is not just for us, but it is for our friends, our family, our neighbors, so that we can help them live like God wants us to live. If you would like to be a part of the upcoming Sunday School lesson, please email me at CaseySynoviaFisher at gmail.com. You can record yourself reading one of the upcoming golden texts or sharing what you're thankful for. If you would like more information about service and events with Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic Church, please visit our church website at www.gbtac.org or call the church office at 513-681-9665. Thank you again, boys and girls, for joining me today. And I hope to see you next week for another lesson. God bless.
another lesson. God bless.